Why do they have to keep making everything so small? Because suckers like me keep buying it. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be taking a look at this World's Smallest Atari 2600, part of the tiny arcade line from the World's Smallest Toy Company that keeps on putting out things. You've probably seen these hanging up in pegs at different stores. But this is a tiny 2600 with a little TV and a tiny little joystick. And let's take a look at the packaging. So on the front here it says 9 Atari games plus bonus game Pac-Man. It says the smallest fully functioning desktop console game. I'm going to agree that's smaller than any other desktop console I've ever used. And here's the lineup of the 10 games here. Kind of hard to read, but we got Breakout, Tempest, Centipede, Combat, Pong. That next one there, I can't even read, but it looks like Warlords. Missile Command, Millipede, and Asteroids. And this is interesting because some of these games are joystick games, some of them are paddle games, some of them are trackball games, but we can see in here that obviously there's only one type of controller, so that'll be interesting to see how well they play. And it says includes Atari 2600 console with 10 pre-programmed games, TV, and joystick. Alright, let's take a look at the back. Alright, now we can see the game's a little bit bigger, and yes, that one was Warlords. So, Centipede, Bong, Missile Command, Breakout, Asteroids, Combat, Warlords, Millipede, Tempest, and then bonus game, Pac-Man. And it does look like the Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man, which, in my opinion, is not a bonus. It's kind of a crap game, but we'll take it. Ten games on this thing. Here's the little TV, high-resolution classic console TV. I think there's several oxymorons in that statement. Uh, adjustable screen for online optimal or for optimal gameplay. Iconic 2600 joystick, and then classic 2600 console. Looks like even, it's even got a little, a little orange thing in there. It's supposed to simulate a cartridge, so it's probably a, a push button to turn it on or reset or do something. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll check this thing out. Let's take a look at the sides, and both sides have both. All the same uh, information on it, so nothing new on here. I think it's time to open this up and see how it works. And before I take it all the way out of the package, I just want to give a little shout out to how well they did making a iconic 70s living room with the wood paneling walls and this uh, nice brown colored shag carpet. So that's, that's nice little details to add in there. So let's get this out of the plastic and see what it looks like. Man, I wish I had recorded that part of the unboxing because it was comically hard. <laughs> there was more tape in this th in this package than you would use on a, a Christmas Eve packing up all the presents. So that was crazy, the amount of tape and, and plastic holding that thing in there. I guess they didn't want it to rattle around because it looks like it could be a little, little brittle. But we got it out of there, so let's take a look at what we've got here before we power it up. So here's our little, what they call it, high resolution console TV with a tiltable screen. And I thought this is a really nice touch here. Got a simulated RF modulator. And kids, if you don't know what an RF modulator is, ask your parents. Uh, but this is what you would use to convert your RF output to channel three or channel four on your TV. So that's a neat little addition in there. And then we've got the joystick tethered out to the side there. So pretty cool. We're going to take the tag out of the back here. We've got a tag, a little battery saver tag. Let's pull that out. It looks like it uses three AAA batteries. And uh, we'll power this thing up. All right, so the thing is so tiny, I had to build a little stage here to bring it up into the, the camera even. And the first thing I'm going to let you know is that these cables, or these little cords, even as lightweight as they are, um, are heavier and stronger than the little pieces. So 
you'd have to, if you wanted to like put it on display somewhere, you'd have to probably use some little tape or something to stick this down because the cables are just going to keep on pushing it around. But I did see why this screen had to be tilted because when I had it down on the bottom, there was just no way I was going to have the, uh, have a good angle of the, of the screen since it was so tiny. There's a little clip that holds this in that you can snap that in, but there's nothing to hold it out. So once you pull it out, it kind of retracts back a little bit, but it's better than nothing. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. And, and one thing I did fail to mention is inside the packaging, it had these legs were folded in so they wouldn't get broken. So that's a nice little touch that they, they fold out. So let's power this up with the switch. And there's the tiny arcade. Press to start and it's got a little picture of a, a blinking button on the joystick letting us know which button to push. So we'll go ahead and push that button. And here's the main menu. Here's our list of games. And it shows us to push. I'm guessing that's depicting up and down because that's what's working. Re left and right don't do anything. So up and down and then push your button to select a game. So let's go ahead and check out this bonus game of Pac-Man. I'm going to have to contort myself to, to use this joystick. Oh yeah, that's the horrible Pac-Man Atari 2600 version I remember. So many people were upset when they bought this for their home console and it played nothing like the arcade. But other than the tiny screen, the, the controls aren't horrible. It's working as a, a four-way joystick. So let's fire up one of the games that don't use a joystick and see how that works. So let me see if this button over here does anything. Yep. So these switches are just dummy switches, but this is the, the button to bring you back to the main menu. So let's try Breakout. So Breakout was definitely a paddle game. But I'm guessing you're just going to use right and left on your joystick. So it shouldn't be too horrible. Oh, interesting. <laughs> you can't hold it down. <laughs> you have to go. There's just no way. A paddle would be much easier on this, especially how small the uh, the paddle down at the bottom is. Oh, now it's letting me hold it down. So that's not too bad. Let me see what the option, it said option and start. Let me see what the options were on that one. Let's go back into the game. Go to options. So I guess just the speed. So let's try medium speed. Oh, and you can adjust the paddle. Let's go to medium speed, medium paddle. That's a little better. I can actually see being entertained by this for a while. Still would have enjoyed a paddle though. Alright, let's go back. And maybe find one of the games like Centipede that required a trackball. And I know Centipede did have a four-way joystick option. So this isn't the optimal button for this type of game. Tiny little button and a hard click. I don't see anybody getting very far in this game. The, the centipede is going amazingly fast too. I don't think that's accurate to the arcade. At least the, the speed of how far he's making it down. Let's check out... 
Tempest. So Tempest would have been another game that used a spinner instead of a paddle or a joystick. So I'm guessing left and right is just going to take the place of the spinner. Oh, a high score table. That's neat. And it even lets you select the level just like the arcade game. And the enemies are coming up the screen pretty fast. And this is another one that my finger on this button here would suffer fatigue faster than I can get through any of these levels. Maybe if I did the old numb thumb club version. Yeah, it's just not comfortable either. I'm not expecting this to be super comfortable considering it's a novelty item. But it works. And it's got a decent selection, the 10 games. Let's try out Warlords. This is a fun four player game where you gotta basically defend your castle from the other players using almost like a breakout style gameplay. hard to control but and it's always fun when two of the castles just start warring against each other and just back and forth and killing each other off and they're picking on me well cool cute little guy. Well I can tell you that 10 year old Chris would be completely amazed that they were able to get all the games of a Atari 2600 inside this little thing. I mean just the just a single game cartridge itself would be larger than this thing obviously. And it, it does a pretty good job at what it does. I know it's just a novelty but it actually works. The games work and they're fun to play. A little uncomfortable, but that's to be expected. And the crazy thing is it's actually easier, as, as I'm recording, it's actually easier to see the screen and play it from the camera, <laughs> since I'm using an iPad Pro to film this, than it is to look on the screen. So maybe if you got one of those, uh, you know, the, those jeweler, uh, the, the magnifying glasses that the jewelers use, and stick it on your desk in front of it, then you'd be able to see it better, but... Overall, it's it's a cute little novelty, and the other day I reviewed this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles tiny arcade machine, so you can see kind of how it how it fits side by side. They may have even used a similar screen inside these two because they're about the same size. But you can start to build yourself up a pretty nice uh, 70s 80s uh, arcade with with all these little tiny arcades, and it did come with a booklet of all the tiny things that they make. So you can see all the different toys they make including on the back side here a lot of arcade machines. So not just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles but a bunch of them. Pinball machines, even a Dance Dance Revolution and then some handhelds. So the company's doing a good job putting out a bunch of cute little products and I think as long as people keep enjoying them and, and buying them, they'll keep on putting out new ones. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I do hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content and want to see more reviews, I'm always buying silly crap like this. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to also check out our Family Geekery podcast every Tuesday. New episode covering things like this kind of arcade stuff. Video games, comic books, movies, TV shows, a little bit of everything. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.